Welcome back to TK Tennis. So today we have a review of MSV Swift. Um, in the case you haven't heard of MSV before, you're not the only one. Prior to about six months ago, maybe I've heard about MSV strings before, but I really didn't pay much attention because here in the States, um, I don't know anybody that plays with MSV. And there were several people in the comments that thought that MSV had a really nice line of strings and it piqued my interest. So I went ahead and purchased several sets of strings. Uh, MS Swift was one. MS Cofocus was another one. And then the third one was MS Buzzard or Boussard right here. So this is for MS Swift. And just to let you know, I'm also currently hitting with Cofocus and a little interesting tidbit by these are both strings that are white in color. But these strings are already far different from one another, which I think you'll find out when you watch this Swift review. And then in a few days when you watch the Co-Focus review. Um, very, very different string, strings, even though they look exactly like one another. Um, when I was stringing these, these had a lot of coil to them. They felt different. So these strings, and I would say both of these strings so far, the Swift and the Co-Focus, are not your typical polys. There's something different about it. It's hard to explain, not only when you're stringing it, but also when you're playing with them. So I think the people in the comments that mentioned, hey, they make some really good, interesting strings, go try them out. They had a really good point. Now, whether this fits you or not, let's find out. So let's jump into MSV Swift. All right, so let's first get into the attributes or let's talk about quickly when I was stringing it. The one thing you notice about MSV Swift, it's not a hyper slick coating on the strings, but it's also not a dry coating. It's sort of like in the middle. It's a slick coating, but not as slick as you might find with Toraline strings or restrings, restring strings. Uh, but they are slick, just not hyper slick. Maybe more like a Alu Power, which sometimes, depending on the color, is a little bit more slick, but I would say even a little bit more slick than Alu Power. But certainly not dry like Head Hawk Tua, Head Hawk Touch, or uh, Kirschbaum Super Smash, or Kirschbaum um, Flash that I've been using, and many, many, or let's say the majority of polys, even let's say Solinko Hyper G, more of a dryish coating on it, not a slick coating. So going into the attributes, I'm sure you jumped ahead a little bit, but I hope you did not go too far because this is an interesting string to talk about. So on the control category, I would say this is a highly controlled string. It had excellent control um, overall, which was really interesting, which is going to come in handy for a lot of players, depending on your style of play. Spin potential, there really wasn't a lot here. Um, I found this is not a very overly spin-friendly string. Don't get me wrong, it's still a poly, so it will still impart an amount of spin that you want, depending on your on your stroke but it's not a very sharp it's not sharp it's a round poly so it doesn't have a tremendous amount of grip so it's spin for a poly is just average um, which is not necessarily bad it just depends on your style of play but if you're a high spin player then you probably just don't want an average type rating on a string Moving on to snapback, it was very good. Again, because it's sort of that slick coating, not hyper slick, it's very good. I'd say almost a very good between very good and excellent. It has very good snapback. Once in a while, the strings will be slightly out of place, like a half a millimeter. But generally, like most polys, it returns to its, well, I shouldn't even say most polys, because there are some polys that don't have very good snapback and really stay out of place. But this one does come back into place on its snapback. Power potential is normal in terms of how a poly is. I would say in the lower end of normal, most poly is again, as I always say, you won't find much more or much less power on a, on a poly on any polys. If you get 2% more power on a particular poly than another one or 2% less, that's sort of like the maximum range on polys. You won't find a poly that has, you know, some people say this has 20% more power than another poly. I've never seen that ever on any of my string testing, even beyond the videos that I've done on YouTube. You just don't see a big variation on power on most polys. But with some polys, you do get something for free. I'd say my reference point would be Restring Zero. That gives you a little extra power for free. 
and that's sort of on the higher end of poly but it's not like a gut and it's not like a good multi-filament that gets you a lot of extra pop and thrust behind the ball so on this string it's sort of on the lower end it doesn't give you anything for free and i wouldn't even say it's normal it's slightly lower than normal and as i often say as well if you're a big hitter and the power comes natural for you that's probably great for you. You don't want extra power. Like most professional tennis players, they don't look for a string that gives them more power. If anything, they look for strings that mute the power a little bit more than give you more power. Now here's the, the kicker. There's always something that stands out about every string that's very dramatic. And for this one, it's durability. This lasted about two and a half hours for me, which is about four hours, five hours less than normal. It broke very quickly, um, which, Again, if you're not a string breaker, you don't care about durability. So a lot of people look at this and say, well, durability sucks, so I'm not going to get it. But if you don't break strings often, you shouldn't even pay attention to durability whatsoever. However, on the tension maintenance side, this one's a little harder to tell because the tension maintenance was great, but the strings didn't last very long. So if you don't break strings longer, if you don't break strings often, I should say, and you're playing with it for 10 hours maybe you won't find the tension maintenance was high so this is probably a little bit misleading it's very possible that tension maintenance was normal and not high but when the strings don't last that long i don't really have a good gauge to say for sure whether tension maintenance was high so take that for what it's worth this very well could be wrong on tension maintenance going to feel there's really only one word to describe this in terms of an attribute and that is crisp. It is a very crisp, firm feeling string, not harsh by any means. Um, maybe almost a little muted as well, but I don't mark it as muted. I would just say crisp, but I mean, that's the sensation you get out of the string. It was very evident the three times, the two or three times I played with it, it had a crisp feel to it. And it's the one sort of feel attribute that I can describe this string. Now here's where it really comes down. Who, what's the overall grade? Well. I play with a fair amount of spin. I have normal semi-western to almost western grips, more semi-westernish. So I do hit with spin on all my sh uh, shots. I don't hit a lot of slice. I'm pretty much hitting top spin on both my forehand and backhand. And this string is not for people like me that like to hit spin because the spin potential is average. I hit with spin. It doesn't really give me anything extra. Um, so there's really no strong reason for someone like me to play with a string like this because I like to hit spin on pretty much every shot that I hit. So the overall grade, I think this is a really excellent string because it, for spot hitters or traditional hitters. So if you have an Eastern grip or you are very, you hit the ball lower over the net and you tend to hit your spots and really move someone around without a lot of spin, this string has a great feel to it. And I think you'll enjoy that a lot. So if you do hit with slice, and you push the ball around the court, or you have a very, not aggressive swing, but a more of a modest swing, a more deliberate swing, for those spot hitters, I think it's an A minus string. However, that's not most people, I don't think. So for spin players, people that hit with spin, I give this string a C. So like with every string, people, it's so subjective, but you really have to determine what string works best for your style of play. And this string works best, and I think it works best for traditional hitters. And if there's someone in the comments that is a traditional hitter that you play with these strings, I would love to know if you find that assessment of what I'm giving, if that's accurate. And if you're a spin player as well, and you play with these strings, let me know if you disagree, because I'd love to have the additional feedback. I can only tell you what I feel based on my game and not what you will feel on your game. But I do a lot of back-to-back -back testing with another racket every time I play. So I really have a nice control group in terms of my string tension, the racket that I use, and playing with another racket. So I get a really good sense for how a string performs, or at least I think I do. So who is it for? It's players who prefer lower launch angles and have game styles that are not highly topspin oriented. And for those who are not string breakers, this is a string for spot hitters. The feel is wonderfully crisp, but it's downfall but its downfall is poor durability. Would I use it again? No, but that's only because it does not suit my game and durability for spin players is poor. So that's it for MSV Swift. Stay tuned for my MSV Co-Focus 
review coming up because I'm blown away at how different these strings are. They look the same, the packaging is the same, the color's the same. Very, very different strings. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I hope you do. Um, also like the video, it helps the algorithm move uh, my videos up higher and get more visibility, which helps me get more subscribers, which motivates me to do more string reviews. I mean, YouTube is all about motivation to do these videos. And trust me when I tell you, every YouTuber, the more comments you get and the more likes you get, that is the motivation to create content because creating content is not necessarily easy. Um, it takes a lot of time and effort, but at the same time, it's also very rewarding. So hope you like the content, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next ace.